Hello YouTube fellow Wasteland Wanderers, welcome back to The Bigger Pixel. I am, as always, your host, The Gaming Mandroid, and this is your source for weekly Fallout 4 content. Now today's subject of this video, uh, what I want to talk about is the Syringer Rifle. This is a very unique item, uh, not unique as in like rare, there's only one copy of it, there's actually lots of copies of the Syringer Rifle around, which is why I'm not going to waste time telling you where to find the Syringer. There are lots of places you can find it, virtually any hospital or any location at all that has to do with medical fields of any kind. Heck, if you, if you went to a school, I bet you could find one sitting in the uh, nurse's office. Uh, so you can find these everywhere. If, if you really can't find one, you can definitely buy one from Dr. Sun in uh, Diamond City. Uh, but like I said, they're all over the place. But what I want to talk about in this video is uh, kind of a more long-form examination of the weapon because I haven't seen anybody else really kind of talking about it and examining it. And I think that's because they might kind of underestimate its usefulness, at least in certain situations. So the first thing to keep in mind, right off the bat, I'll say this from the get-go, this is not a weapon in the traditional sense. Trying to actually deal damage to your enemies and kill them with this weapon is not going to work out. There are two different syringes that uh, do have damaging effects. We're going to get onto the ammo and, and dis dissect each one a little bit later, but bottom line is they're not worth it. So over the course of this video, don't think of this weapon as uh, really a weapon. I consider this a utility item that can be useful in certain situations and is mainly useful for stealth or pacifist characters. So let's talk about what makes the Syringer rifle unique. And there are a lot of things. Well, first of all, it's a weapon that doesn't quite fit into any categories. I do believe it's technically affected by the Rifleman perk, but unfortunately, uh, that is not going to affect your damage at all because of the way that this weapon works. It has no base damage itself. All it has is the ability to load unique uh, Syringer ammo, which will not even be listed under ammo. It'll be listed in your aid category, by the way. And all of this ammo is very rare. Even, even the ones that are not good are still rare. It's basically a crafted weapon because you're going to have to make all of your own ammo for it. And that is a strength and a weakness to this, uh, to this weapon. And similar to how it is basically unaffected by even the Rifleman perk, it's actually unaffected by virtually any other perk. Quick Hands will not help you reload your Syringer faster. Mr. Sandman will not give it additional damage, even if you somehow put a silencer on it. It will not benefit from additional sneak attack damage in any way from Ninja. However, the one perk, interestingly enough, that will affect it is the Sniper perk. So if you have the Sniper perk, you will still get increased chance to hit heads in bats with the Syringer rifle. Other than that, this weapon is basically immune to perk effects. So at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Mandroid, why would I want to use this Syringer? What is its purpose? What are the advantages of it? Well, to put it in a nutshell, basically the Syringer is the Fallout 4 equivalent of illusion magic in Skyrim. That's basically what it is, because as we look at some of the uh, effects of its ammo that we're going to look at right now, uh, you will see that the ones that are really the most useful are basically the same as old school illusion spells. Now let's go ahead and start off with the very first syringe on the list, it is alphabetical. So the Berserk syringe is at the top of the list, the effect is a chance to frenzy the target for 2 minutes, it has a value of 50, it lasts for 2 minutes obviously. And uh, let's look at its recipe requirements, it has an antifreeze bottle, a bourbon, a dirty water, and a steel. Now obviously dirty water and steel, very easy, bourbon a little bit harder, antifreeze bottles are a rare ingredient. It's very rare in general that any crafted item calls for a specific uh, named item rather than a component of some of many different items. Uh, so this is one of those few things and some of the other ammo that we're going to look at also are this way. Um, the same way that it needs bourbon specifically, it needs antifreeze bottles specifically. And antifreeze bottles are rather rare. They are not easy to find and you will discover this. So overall, this syringe is difficult to create. And even worse, it is not just difficult to create, it is difficult to use. Now, 
The Berserk Syringe here has one of the best effects of any of these syringes. It is essentially a shortcut to using the high level, the second tier Intimidation perk or Wasteland Whisperer perk, where you can temporarily um, ally uh, someone to you, or at least uh, they, they technically do not become your allies, but you can temporarily have them attack someone on your behalf as long as you kind of stay back and they can focus on, on you, your mutual enemies now. And that is a powerful effect. It is debatably the mo the most powerful effect out of any of these stranger ammos unfortunately it has been powerfully gimped by a level requirement on the berserker syringe um, and this is the only syringe that appears to have a level requirement as far as who it's going to affect and now i struggled a lot to find clear information about this online it seems that uh, no one is quite 100 percent on how this syringe works um, I've heard some people say that it will work on enemy, any enemies under the level 20. I've heard other people say that it scales with you. I disagree. We did a little bit of testing ourselves here at the Bigger Pixel, and we do have some examples that should be playing hopefully right about now as I'm saying this of even just a level 14 enemy being considered too powerful for the berserker syringe so unfortunately as cool and fun as this syringe is and i do recommend you use it when you can at lower levels it's just not going to have any staying power and by the time you are a higher level this syringe is going to be essentially worthless but if you are a lower level and you're using it it is useful i do recommend you save some antifreeze bottles for it and collect bourbons just to make this if nothing else it is also an ingredient in the fury drug so that's a good reason to craft berserk syringes um, but i do recommend that if you're trying to use them take a quick save right before you fire one because they are difficult to craft like i said and there is nothing more disappointing than wasting one of those custom made items on an enemy that you're going to find out it has no effect on and it's just going to say they're too powerful. So I do recommend, uh, I don't generally say to save scum, but I do recommend quick saving before firing off any berserk syringes because you don't want to waste them. You might as well just load back up and still have your berserk syringe to use on perhaps a weaker enemy that you can find later. So let's look at the next syringe, the bleed out syringe. It says it does 30 points of damage over 10 seconds to target. Its value is 17. It only lasts for 10 seconds. And its components to make it are very, very easy to find. One fiberglass, one oil, and one steel. You can probably make a ton of these bleed out syringes pretty conveniently. And that's the whole point. This is uh, the way that they're basically portraying this is that this is the baseline damage syringe. Um, for the syringer. Unfortunately, this is worthless. Guys, don't waste your time. Don't carry around these bleed out syringes. 30 points of damage as a flat damage. It's not like your weapon where that's the base damage and then you take perks and then it does more damage or it can be affected by psycho or this or that. No, none of this, nothing you do will increase that 30 damage. And 30 damage is not a lot. It's not even enough to outright kill a level 1 enemy. So this syringe is essentially worthless, especially since it takes 10 seconds to get your 30 points of damage. Almost any gun, even at level 1, a 10mm pistol, is probably going to be doing like 20-something damage from just a single shot that's instantaneous not over 10 seconds so this is worthless like i said do not waste your time trying to use the syringer as a damaging weapon it is a utility item and this is not one of the syringes that is useful all right up next we have the bloat fly larva syringe Right here it says chance on death for target to spawn a bloat fly, its value is 10, and it has no listed duration. I assume that that means the effect is essentially permanent on the enemy that, or just the target that you have shot it on, uh, that it's essentially going to last until it dies, and at that point it's going to check the chance, so-called, of a bloat fly spawning. I do not actually know if there have been any cases in which the bloat fly does not spawn. Every time I have used it, it has spawned a bloat fly. But the ingredients here to craft one are a bloat fly gland, a single piece of glass, and one psycho. Now the glands are pretty easy to find as long as you find some bloat flies, that's not hard. Psycho is probably the most expensive and difficult ingredient to uh, use here. So this is a uh, kind of middle line on uh, the, the bottom line cost of crafting one of these syringes. Now as far as how useful this syringe is, my opinion is that it is worthless. Um, I don't think there's any point to this. It deals no damage whatsoever when you shoot a thing. And then uh, once 
you do kill the enemy, it's actually spawning a new enemy for you. Now, in like certain situations with a crowded room, perhaps a bloat fly pops out of the corpse of one guy, and now he's fighting and distracting your other enemies. That could be useful in certain situations. Overall, I think as far as combat goes, this syringe is not worth your time, guys. It's a waste of time. It's pointless. The one thing about it that I do think is interesting is that I have seen it does have a chance. Uh, I'm not sure what affects its chance. I'm not sure if you have to be a high level for this to start happening, but it does have a chance to spawn legendary bloat flies and legendary enemies drop legendary items so i think the one possible use of this syringe may be actually for farming legendary items surprising as that is isn't it surprising what you can do with a syringer rifle it is a utility item unlike any other so let's move on next we have the endanger all syringe the effect is that it reduces the target's damage resistance by 25 percent for two minutes it has a value of 60 caps and let's look at the ingredients it has one acid one glass one medex and one pencil so none of these ingredients are particularly rare the medex is the probably the most valuable one although pencils are probably going to be a little bit harder to find probably the rarest ingredient there is the pencil uh, so this is, uh, again, a pretty middle line. You can probably make endanger all syringes uh, pretty easily and get a good stack of them. But the question is, do you want to make a bunch of endanger all syringes? I would say no. Maybe carrying just a couple of these. Sorry, yet again, I don't think this syringe is really worth it. But maybe carrying a couple of them would be worth it for very tough enemies that are higher level than you. Getting 25% damage resistance, uh, reducing their damage resistance by 25% could be useful if we're talking about basically a boss or legendary enemy that has a lot of health, if it's uh, a lower or level enemy than you, or even just the same level enemy than you, then I don't see how it's even worth the time to switch to your syringer, load an endanger all syringe, shoot them, then switch back to your actual damaging weapon. I don't see how that's worth it unless we're dealing with a very tough enemy. And even then, there are plenty of other ways that you can get similar effects. I mean, you could just take some psycho and boost your damage by 25%. That's a very similar effect to reducing their damage resistance by 25%. So this, I would say, is still not a very useful syringe. But stick with me, we're getting to the good ones now. So up next is the lock joint syringe. It has a chance to paralyze the target for 10 seconds. It has a value of 40. Again, duration 10 seconds. And let's look at the ingredients to make it. It takes one dirty water, one lead, which you could be getting from those pencils, by the way, one steel, one sting wing barb, and two tar berries. Now, looking at the rarity of these ingredients, um, this is going to be one of the most difficult syringes to craft. Tar berries are not that common, and as far as I know, I don't believe you can grow them in your settlement either, unfortunately. So you have to harvest tar berries. Stingwing barbs also are drop, drops from, of course, the stingwings, from the mosquitoes and whatnot. So you're going to have to go out and find wherever, a place where there's a lot of those and hunt them. And even then, they may not drop the barbs. So this is uh, one of the tougher ones to craft. But that makes sense because this is by far the best syringe on this list. The best syringe available, at least as far as combat goes. This is the one syringe that truly can be carried into a major firefight against a major enemy. And this syringe still has a wonderful usefulness. Um, unlike that Berserk syringe, shockingly enough, there does not seem to be a level cap on the effectiveness of this paralyzing lock joint syringe. Now, we did run into one uh, character during playtesting, uh, Tessa, that was just immune to this somehow. I don't understand why. I don't believe it was actually related to her level, although her level was very high. Um, our first theory was that it had to do with power armor, but I, that did not hold up either. 
but in general, this is not going to check any requirements at all to see whether it works. It's just going to work for you. Stuff is just going to freeze and fall over, sometimes falling to their death if they're in the right place, which is very funny. But either way, even if they just fall to the ground, 10 seconds is more than enough time for you to crouch down again, sneak away around the corner, get some more sneak crits, or to just op just pull out your gun and just unload on them while they're completely helpless. You can just walk right up to them zoom in on their head and just get a million headshots with your automatic shotgun or whatever it is you have so final judgment on the lock joint syringe definitely worth it craft these things as soon as you can and carry them around this this syringe alone makes carrying the syringer worthwhile now next we have the mind cloud syringe now let's look at its effect target the target believes you have vanished and has a reduced chance to detect you for 30 seconds now for some reason this has the highest value out of any of them at 73 and like i said duration of 30 seconds let's look at the ingredients one a braxo cleaner that is kind of rare two asbestos one glass and one purified water overall this is pretty easy to craft the abraxo cleaners are a little bit rare but they're not going to cause too much of a headache for us so let's think about how useful is this well clearly it's only useful for a stealth character now there's a lot of different kinds of stealth characters out there so I, i'm not going to go ahead and say that this syringe is worthless it's not worthless it could definitely be used and it's definitely useful for a pacifist character but the effect only lasts for 30 seconds and it's not, it's not really going to get you through an area where your sneak level is just not high enough. So let's say you only have one perk into sneak and you're walking through a crowded room. You're going to need quite a few mind cloud syringes to actually make it through the whole room undetected because you have to hit each and every enemy that might see you with one and it's only going to last 30 seconds. So let's say you have to walk to one side of the room and then back to the entrance where you came. It's going to take a lot of these syringes to get you through there completely undetected. That being said, I do think it's very useful for stealth characters because they can. this can be a way to end the combat that they're not ready for. Let's say you do have a decent sneak skill, but you come around a corner and boom, you're face to face with an enemy and he detects you and you, you don't want to fire your weapon because that's just going to draw more enemies. Instead, you hit him with one of these mind cloud syringes, slink back into the shadows and go on your way. Uh, the way you intended by sneaking. So, again, utility item, pretty useful, at least for a stealth character. Alrighty, next up we have the Pax Syringe. Now, it says here it has a chance to make the target non-violent for 30 seconds. Its value is 39 keps, and it has a duration, again, of 30 seconds. Now, its uh, recipe requirements, uh, two mute fruit, one nuka cola and one steel steel is of course very common mute fruits you can grow yourself at sanctuary or wherever your settlements may be located so actually nuka cola is going to end up being the hardest ingredient to grab here very easy to find a regular nuka cola at lower levels once you get to higher levels my experience is that they start getting replaced with nuka cola cherries and nuka cola quantums which are better but will not substitute as an ingredient for the pack syringe. So the Nuka Colas actually might be your biggest headache in making this. So overall, this is uh, not necessarily going to be the easiest uh, thing to craft um, just because of those Nuka Colas. Now, is it useful? It's very useful. Again, predominantly for a stealth character, this is most useful. Now, it does basically work like a calm spell would in Skyrim, say. So, except for the fact that unlike the Berserk syringe, it has essentially no level cap on its effectiveness. So you can use this at low levels and you can use it at high levels and it's perfect, perfect, perfect for stealth builds and pacifist builds, okay? Now, the only downside of it is that similar to Calm Spells in Skyrim, it does not actually remove the fact that the enemy has detected you. Now, it will be very easy for you to become stealthily undetected in that sense, right? Um, the moment they turn their backs, they leave combat, you can crouch down, you're pretty much hidden again immediately. So you could just calm them, have them turn their backs, sneak attack, crit them, or however, whatever your approach to combat is. So it can solve problems for you in this sense. But what it doesn't reset, annoyingly enough, is whether you've been caught pickpocketing. I knew that that was my main hope for the calm effect uh, in Skyrim and in here as well, is that I could 
get caught pickpocketing, calm someone, and then try pickpocketing them again. Unfortunately, that's not how this works. So other than that, it's still very useful. And I do believe that in some cases it might help you kind of get through uh, with NPCs that maybe have crucial dialogue, but you accidentally attacked them or something. You can pax them, get them calm, and then hopefully get through your dialogue in, a, in 30 seconds or less because that's all, all the time you've got but i do believe that in certain situations it might solve problems Stop that really right nothing else in the game can solve for you Stop there right is there. no other way to calm an enemy after they have started attacking you so this can definitely be useful and it can be applied in a lot of different ways do now next up we have the Just rad scorpion venom syringe it does 40 points of damage over 10 seconds to a target its value is 65 that is a 10 second duration once again so let's look at its ingredients glass times one steel times one both very easy and a rad scorpion stinger times one definitely much rarer you're gonna have to hunt you're gonna have to harvest you're gonna have to get a couple of stacks of these before you can make one of these uh, syringes but why should you make this syringe you shouldn't it only deals 40 points of damage this is supposed to be the upgraded uh, better damaging syringe over the bleed out syringe and guess what it's a joke it's laughable 10 po 10 more points of damage over 10 seconds does not change anything it's still not enough to one shot a level one enemy so my advice don't waste your time with this syringe it's not worth it do not treat the syringer like it is a true weapon because it's not it's a utility item and lastly, we are looking at the Yellow Belly Syringe. Its effect is a chance on hit to cause the target to flee for 30 seconds. Now its value is 55, again duration 30 seconds. Let's look at its ingredients. It takes one antifreeze bottle, one fertilizer, one glass, and two steel. Now the fertilizer is a little bit more valuable, but overall uh, those last three ingredients are very easy. But we're dealing with the antifreeze bottle again, similar to the Berserk Syringe. These are rare. They're hard to find. Considering the level cap that is on the Berserk Syringe that is not present here with the Yellow Belly Syringe, I would say you're better off using your antifreeze bottles for the Yellow Belly Syringe. But there are some other things you can use them for, like Berry Mentats, or maybe you want to make the Berserk Syringe so that you can make the Fury drug. Either way. But this Yellow Belly Syringe is pretty good. Again, like most of the other syringes, except for the Berserk Syringe, it does not have a level cap on it. So this can be, even into high levels, a combat solution to you. If you have something way over your level and it's coming right in your face uh, to attack you, all you have to do is hit it with a Yellow Belly Syringe and you've bought 30 seconds. Especially if you're a stealth character, that's more than enough time for you to crouch down, get behind cover, and knock out some more sneak attack crits. They turn around, they see you again, hopefully you've got another one of these syringes. Or maybe you've got a lock joint syringe or a pack syringe. Many of these effects can essentially be applied in similar ways in combat to just immediately distract and stop your opponent from focusing on you. Whether it's because they're paralyzed, because they're fleeing, because they just don't realize combat is going on, or because they're now busy attacking somebody else. These are the effects that are actually useful. So, just to summarize everything look over the list and say what's worth it and what's not. Here's what's worth it on the Syringer. Early game, Berserk Syringe, worth it. Later game, throughout early and late levels, the Lock Joint, Mind Cloud, Pax, and Yellow Belly Syringes are all very useful, especially to stealth characters. Pretty much everything else on this list, all these other Syringes, I'm just going to advise you, they're not really worth it. Unless you're looking for a very specific effect for a very specific reason, I don't see why you would bother crafting these. Okay, so that just about does it for our very long form video on the Syringer. I'm so glad you stuck around until the end. I just thought that somebody really had to do this because uh, out of all the videos I saw on YouTube, nobody was really explaining how the Syringer works or how it might be useful. They're just talking about where to find it, which is the easy part of this. So anyways, that's about it. Thank you for tuning into the Bigger Pixel. I am, as always, your host, the Gaming Mandroid. Please stay tuned. Next week, we'll be releasing even more videos, and hopefully, you've checked out our Black Widow build where we actually make use of the Syringer a decent amount to manipulate our enemies. So, thank you again for tuning in, and I'll see you next week.